Hey guys, Scotty the trainer here. Just wanted to take a couple of minutes, share with you a couple of thoughts. I've been reading a book. Remember books, right? It has actual binders and pages in it. It's amazing now how my kids at school, they talk about ebooks and everything's online. Well, I, I want to start a movement to bring back books. I was reading this book and the foreword of this particular book was written by a man by the name of Dr. Wayne Dyer, very well known. One of the things that Dr. Dyer said and printed many times was this, happiness is a choice. Happiness is a choice and it's your choice to make every single day. Now, I got to tell you that oftentimes in life, I've wondered about that. Is it really a choice? I mean, what about what's going on around you? But I have to say that over time and getting older and having four children and uh, all that we do and business growing and things of that nature and traveling and speaking more, and just life experience. It is true. We have to agree with that. Even if you don't agree with it 100%, there's a certain degree that's absolutely true. In the morning, when that clock goes off, before your feet ever hit the floor, you make a decision on what your attitude's going to be. Is it going to be a good attitude? Are we going to start off with some happiness when things happen to us? How are we going to react to it? So we do control a portion of happiness. I do believe that. Because if we talk about all the things we'd like to have, people might mention, I'd like to have a bigger house, more room, a nicer car. Um, I'd like my children to act different. But yet, we learn to be happy with what we do have. It's in the mind. We chose that. So it's on the aspect of happiness and our thought process that I wanted to share with you a story that I came in contact with. It's a story about the Cleveland Zoo. And some years ago, the Cleveland Zoo had received these tiger cubs. And when they were small cubs, they were in the zoo. So they kept them in an area where they were locked away, where no one could see them. And they would go back and forth in front of the bars because they knew they were captured animals. As they grew up and became teenagers and then full-grown tigers, they were accustomed to back and forth in front of the bars. Well, some years ago, one of the tigers got loose. Whether someone left the cage unlocked or a door was open somewhere, those tigers, one of the tigers got loose. And so as it goes, people were calling the Cleveland police and they were saying, oh my goodness, I hear the tiger. He's scratching on my window. He's outside in my yard. And so the Cleveland police were going all over the place trying to find the lost tiger. Well, when they found the tiger, here's the story that they told. They found the tiger that was in front of a building that was a uh, office building. It was a commercial building and it had iron gates and it would have those iron gates and iron posts. And when they found that tiger, the tiger was in front of those posts going back and forth, back and forth. Now, you and I know that tiger could have went anywhere he wanted to go. He could have went down to the heart of Cleveland. He could have went to the uh, Cleveland Brown Stadium. He could have went down to the riverfront. He could have walked until he crossed city lines and, and state lines. He could have gone anywhere he wanted to go. But when that tiger walked in front of those steel bars, it clicked in his head. Wait a minute. All my life, I've been bound by these bars. So he went back and forth, back and forth. Not because he couldn't go past them, but because his mind, his mental state locked in. Wait a minute. I'm a prisoner back and forth. When all he really had to do was just keep walking and he could have been set free. That's what I want to point out to you and to me and to everyone that ever comes in contact with us. Our mind plays such a massive part in what we do. 
When I was wrestling in high school, one of my wrestling coaches said this. He said, Scotty, if you control your opponent's head, you can control the match. Because if I could control my opponent's head, I could control his movements in the match. And I could get a point here and a point there, and I'd be able to win. One of the biggest battles that we face is the battle against our thoughts and our mental process. Maybe Dr. Dwyer was on to something. Happiness is a choice. No, I may not have everything that I want, but does that mean I can't be happy until I get all of that? No. And just like that tiger, what is it that we're bound by that we were told all of our life will never be? Maybe there's someone getting married and they said, well, you know, my father and mother were divorced. My brothers were divorced. My grandfather before them was divorced. I guess I can't have a successful marriage. That's a mental mindset going on. You're going back and forth, back and forth. Maybe it's addiction. Well, you know, my father had a drug addiction or my great grandfather had this addiction. So I guess I'll be stuck to it. No, remember. You're not locked up on those bars. It's a mental trick being played on you. All you got to do is keep walking, keep going, keep living, keep accomplishing things that you want to do. You're going to make it. So when you're locked up in a situation, look at it and see, is it a real cage or is it just a fence that if you keep going, you're going to be able to get through it? I'm Scotty, the trainer. It's just something to think about. That's how I see it. Hey, you like the videos? Go ahead and like them, share them, get them out to everybody. You do that, I'll appreciate it.